and CJ, keep your mouse away from the stop button. Okay. I'm on my phone, so I don't think it would be a problem tonight. Right. Okay, so we've studied Isaiah 6566, Psalm, the prophecies. And I'm just going to quote 1 Corinthians 14. It said, The prophets speak what the prophets speak. So they're all prophesying really of the kingdom of God, the Messiah, and many other things too. But it's all the same Holy Spirit, okay, really bringing the same message, but they each lived in a different time period and were different people. So they were revealed within a method that they would speak. Sometimes you see scripture is completely identical, but sometimes it's saying the same thing, but they're doing it kind of in their own version. So it's just like newscast. If you watch different news programs, they're reporting the same story, but they're doing it from their perspective. And but they're delivering the same thing. It, it'll really come out the same way, but it might sound a little different. OK, do you understand everybody? Yes. yes. So the prophecy started. It really you go way back to God. He would prophesy in Genesis 3, 15. Really about Christ coming and destroying the serpent. But we see Enoch. Certainly may be the first prophet after God prophesied. Mentioning as it says in the book of Jude, the Lord returns with 10,000 of his saints. That means his angels. So there were prophecies before we could see certainly through Enoch. There might have been others. We don't totally have it recorded. The prophets were prophesying the kingdom of God. It's what we've been reading. We've been studying on this genealogy, this topic. And of course, Jesus is the Savior, the Son of God, Son of Man. So we covered the Olivet Discourse. Everybody see Olivet Discourse. Olivet Discourse. That's in other words, that's what Jesus prophesied at the Mount of Olives. OK. Yes. Come on, give, give me talk back to me. I'm not here alone. Yeah. OK, yes. I'm asking because I will make sure you understand it. Sorry. OK, yes. thank you. All right, so follow along now. So. So we come to a man named Moses, Moshiach. Who was a mighty prophet. He wasn't the Messiah, but the anointing went from heaven, but he was anointed in a sense. But he was simply leading the all leading the way to Christ. OK. Yes. And it was all about the kingdom of God. And now does everybody anybody remember what the kingdom of God is really overall? I'll give you a clue. It's in Revelation 21, but don't turn here and see if you remember. CJ. Um, Revelation 21. Revelation 21. Yeah, it's Revelation. I got to remember to stop leaning because everybody just sees my ball head when I see that. It's, not, it's, it's, it's the church, right? Well, you're not for you're 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 on the right path. That's not a bad answer. It's it is a church, so it's not a wrong answer, but it's God tabernacling, dwelling with his people or the church. We could say the assembly. OK, does everybody understand it? Yes. OK, you can write that down now. I'll write that down later. So when I bring it up or when I talk about it, you know what it is. The kingdom of God is really God. Simply dwelling with his people. Which would be the church, the ecclesia, the call out ones, ones baptized into Christ to obey him. So it's not just a baptized ones obeying him. So that's really what the kingdom of God is. It's simply the obedient servants. That's really the elect. Who obey him. The ones that are in the kingdom, the kingdom is a spiritual eternity. In other words, God himself. Through his son, Yeshua, OK? Yes. This is important. You got to pay attention now. And OK, so I've just said enough for as we read this. OK, so the prophets prophesied. So I had to read this. I don't know if we'll read it reverse. We'll read what we can. So from verse 19, actually, we've studied this before. Let's start in verse 19. We're in Deuteronomy 31, 19. OK, just look in your own Bibles. I might share the screen later if I need other scriptures and stuff, so I'll just save time. You know. All right, is everybody there? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. It says now therefore write ye this song for you and teach it the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. So in other words, Moses like me, I mean like him, was a songwriter. They would prophesy in, in these days these songs and singing. That's why later on why we sing a cappella and it's teaching. Okay. Do you understand now? Songs teach, but they prophesied through the prophets. And he was a, a mighty prophet. He did great miracles by God and the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And so he was to teach, to prophesy, but the prophecy, but the prophets would have rebukes and judgments, sometimes blessings, but a lot of times they disobeyed. This time they did. Let's back up, just go to verse 18. I didn't have you read that, but let's read it. And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have wrought, and that they are turned into other gods. So that's what it really was. I should have probably had you start there, but they turned to other gods, okay? Now, at times they repented somewhat, and he didn't totally wipe them out and restore them to a degree. But... <clears throat> They will be restored by the time of Joshua after Moses dies. And you see that when you come to the end of chapter 32, I think, or the end of Deuteronomy. So here we see <clears throat> he's teaching them. And he says, put in their mouths. That means they got to speak the word that this song may be a witness. So a song is a witness. In other words, a witness testifying what God said. For me against the children of Israel. So here he's against the children of Israel because they went and followed other gods and goddesses. There's his gods. So that's really the setup. And he told them in 28 and other places, if you obey me, you get blessings. If you don't, the judgment comes. So he speaks. Now you, I'll take it you've already read it. And he's yes. going to bring them to land full of milk and honey. In verse 21, it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness. So in other words, the song is just the word of God delivered to them in the prophecy and warning them of the judgments. Okay, so he said, for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. So it's for future generations. Their seed would be future generations. For another imagination, which they go about even now before I have brought them into the land, which I swear. So God knew they were evil and carnal and would disobey him before they even got to the promised land, which represented the kingdom of God. So Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it the children of Israel. Okay, just like I wrote those songs quickly, he wrote it quickly because it was really just the Lord revealing them the words to say. And I don't know if God gave the melody or he did it, doesn't say, but nonetheless, it was a song. It was a prophecy song, the song of judgment if they don't repent. So he's warning them, give them time to repent. But Moses, well, let's read on. So Joshua will take over. We're not going to read every verse. The Levites were the priests. See, this is the time it was starting, the law of Moses. So they had Levitical priesthood. And... So verse 26, take this book of the law, that's the word of God, the law of God, the law of Moses, are the same thing, and put it in the sight of the Ark of the Covenant, the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. So they had it in the secure place in the Ark, the law that was given in the Ten Commandments. But he says, 27, for I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. They went into witchcraft and went after other gods and goddesses. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, you have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death? So he's saying right now you're rebellious. In the future you will be too. Gather to me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. Okay. So he'll call... All of, even Israel against them as a witness. And it's political. See, the spiritual life and political system were united. 
in those days in ancient times. They still are, the truth be given, but that's another topic. But he says, for I know that after my death, okay, so he's speaking of future, after he dies, he won't be able to see with his physical eyes. But he, he knows what's happened because God revealed it through the song. 32 will be the song. You will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days. So the latter days means in the future days, which he's really prophesying of 70 AD overall, around that time period and before a little bit. But eventually the end we know is 70 AD when the temple would fall. And Israel and Judah received the final judgment upon the 12 tribes. Because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. When you read through and you read through the book of Kings and Chronicles, you see they made idolatry and idols with their hands. Even at this time when Aaron, his brother, made that golden calf. So verse 30 now. And Moses spake in the ears of the congregation of Israel the words of the song until they were ended. Okay, so he spoke it and sung it, I guess. And the congregation of Israel is who he's talking to or sing it to until he completed it. So the song is in chapter 32. So it just continues. Moses didn't say, I'm going to go to chapter 32 now. He didn't say that. That was added years later. So now we just see the song. And we're going to read some of it now. Give ear all ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear all earth. The words of my mouth. So who's the heavens and earth? Israel. Israel. Yes. Because it's a congregation of all Israel, but Israel. What is Israel? Israel. What is Israel? Yeah. CJ. Israel is a. Uh where um, the first century church is and no, the discipline. Correct. Huh? It's the 12 tribes. Oh, duh. Who came from Isaac, who came from Abraham. Yeah. Okay. Does everybody understand? Yes, yes. It's simply the seed of Abraham. Yes, yes. When Jacob had 12 tribes, yeah. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Okay. okay. All right, so we established in other studies too. That it says clearly here, he's speaking to the congregation of Israel. So he says, give her all ye heavens, and I will speak and hear all earth, the words of my mouth. So when, a, when it's prophetic, there's times, heavens just means the stars, and the earth means a planet. But in a prophetic sense, because remember, they spoke in metaphors and used physical things to explain something spiritual. Okay. So I believe everybody understands that by now. So let's read some of what he's saying. Two, verse 2, my doctrine shall drop as the rain. It's really coming from God, remember, but he's just speaking it out and writing the song. My doctrine, that's the teaching, the word of the Lord shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as a dew, as a small rain upon the tender earth, as the showers upon the grass. So it's showing it's coming down from God. Because I will publish, publish the name of the Lord, ascribe you greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. That just means complete, although it is perfect. That means complete and fully grown and nothing can stop it. For all his ways are judgment, which can mean wisdom. See, and discernment. But it's judgment too, meaning there's punishment for disobeying. A God of truth, there's a righteous judgment too. You get rewarded. So judgment ain't always just putting people in prison. Judgment can be something good and saying you're free and everything's okay. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. So God's pure, no sin, no darkness. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are perverse and crooked generation. And other prophets prophesied that way, but we see here Moses started Perverse means twisted. They change. Crooked don't mean straight. He's been on a shape as a generation within 40 years, a time period. So he's saying they corrupt. They have spots. So it's corrupt themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. So they don't have a marking of God. 
We have a marking of the serpent. Disobedience. Verse 6, do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? See, that's foolish to disobey God. Be rebellion. Is not he thy father, your father that hath brought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask your father and he will show you your elders and they will tell you. So they were to remember, and the elders or the teachers and the priests even would tell them, remember how, you know, what God did in Egypt and how they split the Red Sea. How God split the Red Sea. When the Most yes. High divided to the nations their inheritance and he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. But the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Well, that would be the 12 tribes. He found them in the in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, floweth over her young, spreadeth the broader wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead them. God don't need nobody's help. And there is no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock, butter of kine and milk of sheep and fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat and Thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Okay, and the grape juice, or they call it wine. Okay, so in other words, they had the blessing. That's yes. Good stuff in, in those days. They didn't have grocery stores. You know, you could have famine. And, you know, I'm sure Naomi and that part of the world where she lives, they understand that certainly. People could starve to death in Africa, right, Naomi? Okay. So verse 15, but just she run, Jason, however you say his name, wax fat and kick, thou art waxing fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness, then he forsook God, which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations provoked they him to anger. Okay, stop there. So they did good. But like spoiled brats, see, sometimes people get too rich and everything they need. They rebel and turn bratty and think they're always going to get their way. And think they're above, they don't have to do anything. God will just take care of them, but that's not how it works. Yes. So let's go to verse 17. They sacrifice unto devils. That's their gods. And their gods are the aliens and those spaceships. So they're devils, not to God. They were to sacrifice certain animals to God, but they sacrifice unclean animals and humans to gods whom they knew not. They mingled with the heathen. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. To the people before them rejected those gods because God gave the Ten Commandments. There's no other gods before me. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. So you never forget what God did for you. You don't forget the word. They did. Yes. When the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are very forward generation children in whom is no faith. So if you go to other gods, idolatry, you're not having faith in the creator God, the all powerful one. And he says there's no faith. We find that through scriptures, even as apostles did that, certainly when they were out in the water. They have moved me to jealousy. That they, but let me read again. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger and their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. 
Okay, so it's like a marriage and your marriage partner, the wife cheating. Well, that would make the husband mad and jealous. Yes. Because really, they belong to God. He brought a yes. covenant through them through Abraham. 22, for a fire is kindled in mine anger. So burn into the lowest hell, that means the grave, shall consume the earth with their increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. So that means a judgment throughout the earth and their land because they went to idolatry. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devour with burning heat with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beast upon him with the poison of serpents of the dust. In other words, the devil and demons will possess the land and take them over. So he's talking <clears throat> to his people there, but he's prophesying too, which will eventually be to 70 AD. Okay, so keep that in mind. The sword okay. without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. I said, I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I fear the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. See, now we see parallels. I'm not going through the New Testament in this one, maybe another time. But maybe, maybe I'll do it a little bit. But we see it's the same thing really with Jesus in Matthew 25, which I had you read in particular. It's saying the same thing, but through parables. He said, oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. So he's saying if they were wise, they would realize what would come, what would be known as the last days before the end, they wouldn't be doing this nonsense. But the letter in, of course, he's prophesying in the future because he said after my death. Now Israel did rebel many times, there were judgments, of course, but he's prophesying of <clears throat> the letter in where it's a total end, okay? How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except the rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? So it simply means that without the Lord you can't be set free. It's just a figure of speech. So one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except the rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up. So you can't resist the enemy without the Lord. That means obedience. For the rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. So he's saying just like Sodom and Gomorrah sinned and rebelled against God, that's what you're doing. We know Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. So he's talking about the destruction. 70 AD, their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. So we see parallels in Matthew 23, where Jesus said generation of vipers and serpents. So their wine is poison. They don't have really the Holy Spirit and certainly the word of God. So they're drinking <coughs> wine or food you know you don't drink poison food you die is not this laid up in store with me and still up among the treasures to me belong of vengeance and recompense their foot shall slide in due time but the day of their calamity is at hand so remember he's prophesying in the future even though israel at this time received judgment too but it wasn't the final judgment okay so when here when it says the day of their calamity is at hand and things that shall come upon them make haste. Well, we see that used in other times in the New Testament, apostles and prophets, Jesus speaking. 
So he's he's speaking of the latter days when he says that hand. OK, you understand? Yes. Yes. It's like in Revelation, it says the time is at hand. So we see that many times, that means near. But he's not saying it to them, people. That wasn't the final end in their time. Now, it might have been a judgment. There were many judgments, but the final judgment. Okay. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself of his servants, whom he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, where are their gods, their rock, and whom they trusted? <clears throat> so people go astray. And in other words, the serpent, the devil, will not help you. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices, drink the wine of their drink offerings. Remember, they sacrificed the devils, verse 17. Wine of their drink offerings, let them rise up and help you and be your protection. So where are those gods when you mingled with the heathen people and learned their ways, did their sacrifices and human animal sacrifice? Where, where is their help now? When God brings judgment, in other words, God's bringing judgment and nothing's going to stop him. They're the devil himself and their gods and can't do one thing. See now what that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So he's the most high He's the boss, if you will. None above him. Nobody tells him what to do. He's foolish anyway. Okay. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies. I will reward them that hate me. So nobody gets by with anything. All these people mock God and hate God, their day will come. Everybody's going to answer to God and his word. Yes. Hands are butts about it. But this time now he's prophesying, which he's prophesying to Israel, remember? And it would come in 70 AD, of course. Now we know that because that's all our past, but that was their future. I will make my narrows drunk with blood, my sword shall devour flesh. And that, see, that the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, all ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, will render vengeance to his adversaries, will be merciful unto his hand and to his people. So God gives people a chance to repent, but he also brings judgment upon those that don't repent. So he says in verse 43, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, will render vengeance to his adversaries, will be merciful unto his land and to his people. So we know in Luke 21, you don't got to turn here, I'm just going to read it for the sake of time and take you too long to do it. So let me just read Luke 21, you just stay there. Because we've gone over it before, but let me bring it up again. So Luke 21, 22, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Well, certainly all things written are what Moses prophesied here, Deuteronomy 32, 31. Yes. So here we see the parallel. We see it throughout. Vengeance is judgment. These be the days of vengeance. So Jesus said it in... He said the same thing, Moses, the prophets speak what the prophets speak. All right, for he will avenge, back to verse 43. Vince the blood of his servants, he will render vengeance to his adversaries, he will be merciful unto his land and to his people. So Matthew 24, he said, for the luck's sake, the days would be short. He was merciful to the obedient ones. He takes care of his children, but the disobedient children he doesn't because they don't repent. 44, Moses came and spake all the words of the song in the ears of the people. He and Hoshea, you know, as Joshua, the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. I guess Hoshea was a Catholic because his mom was a nun. 
<laughs> I just thought of it. All right. You know, remember this with me preaching uh, while committing it. Anyway, the series note was she the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. So there was the prophecy, the song is a prophecy of teaching. Now remember, God doesn't really want anyone to perish in 2 Peter 3 9. So that's why prophecy and prophets are there to warn people, give them a chance to repent, but they would not. As Jesus said, Matthew 23, and he's saying the same thing as Moses and the prophets. Judgment would come. Verse 46, and he said unto them, set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which you shall command your children to observe and to do all the words of this law. So it's the law of God. Sin is the transgression of the law. The law is simply an order. It's an ordinance. It's keeping things in order and going with truth, basically. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life through his thing. You shall prolong your days in the land where you go over Jordan to possess it. So when you read through the book of Joshua, you see they finally got it together. Maybe they remembered Moses' song. What we know is Deuteronomy 32. And perhaps they got their act together and said, yeah, we better, you know, God and Moses meant business. But they backslid later, like they always do, and people do. So for a while there, they were good. They got the blessing. And Jesus said, I don't have the scripture in front of me, he said, if you knew <clears throat> these things that I'm saying to you, God would not bring judgment. I wouldn't have to even go to the cross, but because of their disobedience, judgment would come. Okay, so let's see. Where did I leave off verse 48? The Lord spake unto Moses that self same day, saying, so this all happened the same day. Get thee up into this mountain, Abarim, I guess, into Mount Nebo. You know, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. It don't matter. It's there. You can figure it out. Nebo, Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho. Behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession. So God wanted to give them the land. Not for an eternal land. He's not trying to be a political God. It was to bring the promised seed of Abraham, Jesus Christ. Sure. Okay, that's the whole purpose overall. But he wanted a fellowship with his creation and children. So he would give them the land if they obeyed, of course. He said, and die in the mount where you go is up, and he gathered into your people as Aaron thy brother died, and Mount Hor was gathered into his people. Okay, so he went to the mountain, he was 120 years old, climbed a mountain, he died, which is amazing for a 120 year old man to climb a mountain. So he was in good shape, because God took care of him, he obeyed him. And Aaron, his brother, died sometime before in Mount Hor. It says, and was gathered unto his people. That simply meant he was in the graves like Abraham and Jacob and the rest of them. Enoch, all the good old boys, girls. He was sleeping in the grave to the resurrection. So he did his job. Prophesied what God said. Disobeyed or on the water come out of the rock. So that's why he could not go to promised land, but he did see it from a distance. And <clears throat> see, God rewards those that obey him. Judgment becomes disobedient. You can't get by with nothing with God, in other words. But he is a merciful God if people repent. Okay. 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 All right. So he says, because he transgressed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh, the wilderness of Zen, because you sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. 
yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go there unto the land which I give the children of Israel. Okay, so that's just the scripture saying what I just said. All right, we're going to read chapter 33. Let's go to Matthew 25 now. So that's the prophecy that was set forth, and all the prophets were basically referring to this. Prophecy of Moses for the last day, which of course would be 7 AD. Street preacher, there you are. You ready to study with us? Now I'm talking to Paul. Talk. Street preacher, can you hear me? All right. Okay, we're going to Matthew 25 now. We just read the prophecy of Moses in Deuteronomy 32. So we've had the class. I'm in Skype with the class students, but I'm simulcasting in Palton. But you can ask questions if you want or even debate it. That's why I just left the room open. Because we can prove Jesus came in 7 AD. This is proofs. So either people go with what God says, or they could be like Israel, what we read about, and go their own way and rebel, and judgment comes. So let's look at some of Matthew 25, as he spoke of many parables there. <clears throat> you see prophets in their time and ancient times spoke in story-like language, but it was prophetic and is pertaining to the kingdom of God and to Yeshua, the anointed one, our savior. Let me get there. Okay. One, one, seven, five. Okay, thank you. All right, so we've covered before Matthew 23, 24, and we know 25 is a combination. Jesus didn't speak in chapter and verse. He said, I'm going to Matthew 25 now, everybody turn. Turn around and look in the sky. No, that was added years later. So he's still just speaking. It's in red print. If you got a red print Bible. Hello, Ferenji. We're in Matthew 25. We just read Deuteronomy 31 and 32, showing the prophecy. The song of Moses was a prophecy of 70 AD when Jesus would return, because he said the latter, latter time, latter dates. He said, after my death. So Jesus would speak the same thing as Moses. We know. First Corinthians 14. And I think it's verse 33 of our memory. It said, the prophets speak what the prophets speak. So we don't need prophets today because the prophets spoke what the prophets already spoke of the coming of the Lord and judgment. So here it's a continuation from Matthew 24. When we see the wicked evil servant in verse 51, he gets his judgment just like the wicked will get. He'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth, and it just flows into chapter 25 with us. But Jesus continues speaking. Then shall the kingdom of heaven, so the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God are the same thing. <clears throat> it just means eternal life. Kingdom of heaven is referring to the blessing of paradise. And so the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. So we see that throughout scriptures, and certainly when you come to Revelation, you will see the marriage supper of the lamb. We're not, you don't need to turn there now, we could do another time. But that's what he's referring to, it's really the same thing. But Jesus tells it here through a parable. And it's simply saying the same thing Moses brought. We're kind of comparing Deuteronomy 28 with uh, <clears throat> the prophecies of Jesus too. So five of them were wise and five were foolish. That's the way of the world. There's some people wise, some are foolish, but this is an even percentage. The 50% wise, 50% foolish. And he says, verse 3, they that took, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Well, oil is a commodity, it's something you need in life. You know, that's why they're raising the price of gas, I guess. But anyway, so foolish people didn't take any oil. Okay. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. That's a smart person because, you know, sooner or later it's going to get nighttime. You're going to need 
It's a bite to see. All these people walk into the walls. They're blind, spiritually blind. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So that means there's a time period passing. The bridegroom, before he would meet the bride, there was an interval period before they met together. Well, that's Yeshua, or you know him as Jesus. Jesus would be in the secret places, as he said in Matthew 24. In other words, he was in the paradise at the right hand of the Father until the Father would send him. So it's a time period. He said, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So as so he's continued from verse 24, chapter 24, and the wicked evil servant from verse 48 to 51, remember. This is the man who took no oil. And now we're going back to Matthew 24. He was a wicked, wicked evil servant. He said, my Lord delayeth his coming. So back to verse 5 now, 25. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, wicked evil servant. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, a bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Well, this is how Jewish weddings were, so they understood. He's speaking to Jews, seed of Abraham people, and they understood this kind of talk. See, people read it today, they make all kinds of things up and use their imagination, but you've got to know history and what he's talking about. And they understood because they were Jewish people. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. All of them did. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Well, that's called, that's, you're a little too late here. See, foolish people wait to the last minute. I remember I used to do that when I took dust in school. Wait to the last minute, and it was very foolish. Didn't make good grades when I did that. When I studied, I did better. Okay, so foolish people are trying to get from the wise. In other words, you do all the work. We'll just sit back and play bingo. And when it's time, you give us some of your oil. No, it don't work that way. Verse 9, but the wise answered, saying, not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. So in other words, do your own work, do your own job. Okay, wonder if it was like you're in a scuba, in an air tank, you're underwater in the ocean, and you don't have enough to get back up to the top, you only got enough air for yourself. So it's kind of like that. It's like, well, you know, I want to live. You should have brought enough air down here. Well, in this case, he's using oil. It's the same procedure. Okay. Do your job, be prepared. While they went to buy, the bridegroom came. They waited too late. They said, now we're going to get it. Well, the clock's ticking. God has his own time schedule. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. So there comes a time the door will be shut. You can't get in no matter how much you knock. See? Jesus already knocks on your door and says, let me in. Now, today is the day of salvation. But these people were foolish because they did not prepare. In other words, they were a wicked, evil servant. And wait the last minute. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. So these are unmarried and virgins. Had no sex, no children. And he said, Lord, Lord, open to us. <clears throat> but he answered and said, Brother, I say to you, I know you not. Well, we saw the same thing in Matthew 7. Now, you don't got to turn there. I'm just going to turn there myself. You're familiar with it. Where did we see that before? Well, in Matthew 7. Keep your place there. I'm just going to read it. You don't gotta, If you don't want to, you don't turn there. In verse uh, 21, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then while I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 
So you see how Jesus feels about people who don't study to show themselves approved and do their job? It says in James to be doers of the word. And we saw that when we were reading Deuteronomy 28. Moses was warning them, which they finally did by the time you got to the book of Joshua. They had it together with the 12 tribes. They were blessed. So they fell away. It's like the wicked evil servant. So we see here, it's like if a virgin was going to marry a man, she should have been prepared for the marriage. And we see the marriage supper of the Lamb in the book of Revelation. That's the gathering together, the union of one with the Creator. But it's through His Son, Yeshua. And it's the second coming. All right. That's what Moses was prophesying. He says, <clears throat> what verse did I leave up on? In uh, 25. Well, they buy it right now. Okay, verse 11. Why am I getting a knuckle here? It says, afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. Well, I'm just doing a parallel now. From verse 21, and everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So that's the, what's going on here. Okay. It, now they're saying, Lord, Lord. Now all of a sudden people get holy when they think they're going to die and judgment's coming. Now, you know, remember when 9-11 took place and all of a sudden everybody's going to church now. All the drinkers and fornicators. Now let's go to church. We're going to die. They blew our buildings up. Well, why weren't they that way before? Waited a little too late here. The day you examine yourself in faith and you obey God every day. Amen. For the virgins that didn't bring oil are regretting it now, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Well, that's the same thing. Matthew 7, and other places too, but we're just using that. In verse 23, Matthew 7, then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So you don't want Jesus saying to you on your judgment, depart from me, work of iniquity. I don't know you. Nobody wants it. Or they shouldn't want it. <clears throat> so verse 13, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So he's warning the wicked, the righteous, as we studied other times. They knew he was coming soon by the signs. Just like Noah did in Genesis 7, he told him a week ahead of time to get into the ark before the flood came. He knew the flood was coming right away. Well, the people of God in that day, he said when they, when the temple falls, Matthew 24 and, and Matthew 24, 16, then let them which in Judea flee to the mountains. Well, that means that the end is near. It's happening. They did too, no. He's talking to the wicked. Remember, he's talking to the, the virgins. Does everybody follow? Can you see it? Yeah. Talking to the virgins that didn't take oil. He said, watch your fur, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So that's the wicked to get their act together, start watching and reading the scriptures. So it's not to the righteous. The righteous knew when Jesus was coming soon. They might not know the exact second, but they knew the vicinity. And he said, it's just like in Matthew 24, go back, 24 now. And let's see the parable of the fig tree in verse 32, 24, just like uh, the page before. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you know when things are near, you know, if I'm cooking, you know, roasting my turkey or something in my oven, I know that it's near, I can smell it, I know it's just about done. See? Yep. So likewise, ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Okay. So Amen. we can plainly see the wicked are the ones who should be watchful. The righteous are already, already watching. They're watching the signs. See? For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And to one he gave five talents. Now he gives another parable, but it all has the same meaning. For he's using the bridegroom in a wedding. Now with money, 
one he gave five talents to one to another two and to another one to every man according to his ser several ability straightway took his journey then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents and likewise he that had received two he also gained other two but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his lord's money after a long time the lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents saying lord thou deliverest unto me five talents behold i have gained beside them five talents more his lord said unto him well done thou good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Where did we see that before? Matthew 24, verse um, 40, 42. Read, watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, if the good men of the house had known what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be also ready in such an hour to think not the Son of Man cometh who then is faithful and wise, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. So what is Jesus saying in Matthew 25? He's saying this is a wise person. They obeyed the Lord. Amen. They got an increase by being faithful. The faithful wise servant would be watchful. It would know the signs. That's a purpose. And be filled with the word of the Lord, with the spirit of truth. So here we see he's rewarded. Verse 21, back to chapter 25. I will make thee ruler over many things, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So he got rewarded, and that's joyful. He got a raise. He got to be, you know, supervisor over others. Verse 22, he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy, thy Lord. So two of them were wise, invested, and gained more, and took their master, their Lord, serious. 24, then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid. Well, how many people in the Bible have feared, fell apart? I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth, lo, there thou hast, that is thine. Okay, the old Elizabeth in English. In other words, I hid what you gave me because I feared. I feared goofing up and the circumstance. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Where do we see that? Matthew 24. The wicked, evil servant. Verse 48, Matthew 24. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, the Lord delayeth his coming. And that's a hypocrite. All right. He said, his Lord answered, said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant, lazy. See, just like the five virgins who were lazy, didn't bring oil. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming, I should have received mine own usury. So he didn't do what was required of him. He was selfish. He feared for himself instead of thinking about his Lord and obedience. He said, take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For to everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Okay, so it's the same thing. The one got rewarded who had the 10 talents, he gained more because he was supposed to give him the money now. And <clears throat> so what you have is what you're required to learn and grow 
But if you only have a little bit of the word of God, it'll be taken away from you. You got to be on solid ground. Rooted and grounded, as Paul would write in his epistles and others. But Jesus said it. In other words, these people were to know that his Lord would return. So it has to do with the second coming. And the ones who waited for him spent their time in obedience. And they were blessed and had joy. So verse 30, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We see the same thing as Matthew 24, the wicked evil servant. Verse 51, weeping and gnashing of teeth means you just go insane because there's no way out. There's not one thing you could do, so you just lose your mind. Outer darkness is separated from God for all eternity. But he said, notice, and cast ye the unprofitable servant. So let's keep in mind now, a lot of people don't speak on that, but God wants us to be profitable, to grow, to have knowledge. See? Yeah, people that were in the room, they took off, but it's okay. I might do this another day too, just leave the room open. See what they type. Mm. Somebody type, mmm. <laughs> I guess you got them thinking. All right, it's okay. That's why I like it in my own room. So heck with them, and they don't want to stay here and listen and take off. They're just the very people we're talking about. Okay, they're an unprofitable servant. They're the five virgins without oil. See, they're the foolish people. So yes. I'm 31 now. So it gets back to the prophecy. The same thing Moses and other prophets speaking about, but what we're we'll covering. And to the right, 31, 32. In Isaiah's prophecy, we covered 6 by 6, 6. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all his angels with them, then shall he set up, sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth the sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed. My father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. We'll stop there. And it's just a call in there. It just means so or continue. All right. Amen. So what is uh, the parable? I mean, the parallel of when the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with them. So he said on the throne of his glory. What is that? Same thing in other places, but we see it in. Matthew 24, 31. Yeah, well, 30. But they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So the nations just means the elect, the ones that were obedient. It don't mean in the false doctrine people were literal, you know, God ain't running for any political office and <clears throat> trying to start war on earth. The nations we see now, so you let the Bible interpret the Bible. This means the elect <clears throat> will be gathered, but also he said the goats too. So it's the people, it's judgment. Separate them one from another, so it's a separation. Nations just means the people. What's within the nations is people. The government. So it's a separation. He gathers all people. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, the goats on the left. So it's a judgment. Come ye, blessed of my Father, and inherit the kingdom of God. It's the resurrection of the righteous. Resurrection of the wicked is verse 30, cast an unprofitable servant out of darkness, weeping, nation of teeth. Okay, so he goes on, says, I was hungry. Naked, did you clothe me? We're not going to read every verse here. We'll just come down with a second time. So the righteous answer, verse 37, they don't fully understand. And he answers 40. The king shall answer, say unto you, realize, say unto you, as much as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. 
So he's saying when you walk in God's love and you obey the commandments, really. Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. So we have love for one another. Then we're simply obeying God. So it's just like feeding them and clothing them. <clears throat> well, when we take care of one another. And. Verse 41, then shall he say also unto them the left hand. So here's the judgment on the wicked. Depart from me, ye curse and do everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. So remember the fire is a judgment on the wicked, not a literal fire, but it was prepared for the evil, basically. The devil is angels. Angels are messengers. The devil means deceiver. He didn't prepare it for the righteous. So he continues hungry, thirsty, stranger, naked, he was in prison. Verse 44, then shall they also answer him, Lord, when saw with thee? And he answers, 45, then shall he answer them, saying, Verily, I say unto you, and as much as you did it, not to one of the least of these, you did it not, not to me. So in other words, it's simply really obedience when it comes down to when you obey the commandments. It's just like taking care of the Lord for his needs. He's just speaking figuratively. Of course, the Lord literally don't have needs. <clears throat> but he's speaking in parables. So 46, it comes down to this. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Jesus said in John 11, if you believe in Jesus and really obey him, you'll never see death. That's eternal life, the utter darkness, the everlasting punishment. It mean physical death would stop, but it means spiritually, your spirit within, whatever you are, has eternal life. But we saw through the study in Deuteronomy again, 28, it's a prophecy of this time Jesus is speaking, and the time is near. All right, do you have any questions? No. Do you have any answers? Answers? Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I do. It's called the Bible. Okay, I enjoy this study. And uh, I was going to give you some homework, but I forgot what it was now. <laughs> but uh, it's okay. I didn't really, I was going to cover more of Peter again, but it's okay. Well, I think I told you to read the whole book, didn't I? You, yeah, you did tell us to do All that. Right. First, second Peter. And uh, well, we've been covering the heavens and the earth. So you see, we started with Moses, Isaiah one. We'll cover that too. You see, when it's a, in a prophetic sense. All right, it's talking about Israel. And the judgment. Are we all clear on that? So if I bring up the future, everybody will understand. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's why Jesus said heaven and earth will pass. Matthew 24. And Peter said the heavens, the earth being on fire and the elements melting. It's in Lamb of God in a dumb room. And they, they think it's literal. They're just totally stupid people. But <clears throat> the truth is, Jesus came. And it's all about the kingdom of God, which means God, tabernacle, and being his being the king through Jesus Christ. Yes. That's what it's about. It's not even really complicated, really. There are some things a little deeper, but it's, you know, pretty much what God wants us to know and live righteously. So we're servants in the kingdom of God. The kingdom is a government, but it's a spiritual government. And so Moses spoke to physical Israel, even though God gave it, so it had a spiritual significance to it, but told him to repent. But they disobeyed, the ones that did. Yes. Of course, the righteous received the rewards. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's uh, 
All right, is there any question or comment? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, everybody knows this now. Okay. Let's stop the recording. <laughs>